Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Farm Vlog today. A lot of folks have been asking me about one thing in particular, and today we're going to address that one thing. We're gonna take you over here, and not that thing, and not these things, but this thing right over here. So we've got a 1968 Bronco. This used to be our fun rig, our farm rig, for hauling wood around and messing around on the farm when I was a kid. And we're gonna take this Bronco today and see if we can get it running. I know the brakes are shot. I know it will run. I've got a battery. I put an electronic fuel pump on it and we're gonna see if we can get her to fire up today. So come along with me on the journey. We'll show you and tell you a little bit more about the Bronco, about the engine, transmission, all that fun stuff. We'll also give you a little bit of a walk around and we'll see if we can get this thing to run. All right, so let's have some fun. Woo! Before we get started on the Bronco, the first item of business we have to tend to is chicken snacks. Now, I made biscuits. I <laughs> tried to make biscuits this morning. I did what you would call a biscuit fail. These things are like little hockey pucks, so we're going to throw them in here to the chickens and let them eat, and I hate my rooster. Don't get me wrong, this is a farm, and it's so cool to wake up in the morning and hear the roosters crow and everything like that, but as soon as I start talking or break out the camera, he's gotta establish his dominance over me, and he won't shut up. <laughs> here you go, guys. Enjoy the mud biscuits. Oh, that rooster. So I guess we should discuss what the Bronco is. So the Bronco came off my dad's farm. It had been sitting out in the rain for a long time underneath an oak tree, and I just couldn't bear to watch it anymore. I asked my dad, hey man, you wanna sell that thing to me? He said, you know what, I got too much stuff. Yeah, I'll sell it to you. Now the Bronco came to us, it had four flat tires, We've got some new tires and wheels or newer tires and wheels on it now so that we can roll it around. I got it home. I started tinkering with it a little bit. I got it running and I drove it up to the top of the hill above our goat pen. And that's where I parked because I didn't have any brakes. It's a three on the tree on the column and it's stuck in low four. I could get back down the hill, but I was afraid without brakes that I might hurt myself. So we waited and we towed it back down here with the tractor. We took the bucket and lifted up the rear end and just drove it down here. Well, let's take you around and I'll show you a little bit about the Bronco. So the last time this thing was registered was 1992. And I don't ever remember seeing it on the road. This is the wheels that we got. And I think these are off of a newer style Bronco. The body, all in all, I mean, the whole Bronco is in pretty decent shape. This top is a very rare top. If you look, most Broncos have a rounded off edge on their top. This is some sort of aftermarket, very rare top, I'm told. So windshields cracked, all this stuff, all the glass is all replaceable and I can get any part I want for this thing. We open up here, inside, you know, it's just an old Bronco. It's nothing special. Somebody has placed aluminum floorboards in here. So we do have some rust issues in the floorboards and we've got some rust issues in the back. And the top, all in all, it's just a little surface rust. Everything looks pretty decent. So if you watch the vlog where I launched the lawnmower off the back of the pickup truck, I'll post a link to it, I think right here. I'll post it somewhere up there. If you watch that vlog, you see a state trooper pull in behind me at the very end of that vlog. Well he came to inspect this vehicle and find the VIN number. And the VIN number is in the oddest place. It's not stamped under the hood. It's not stamped in the door. It's stamped right in this glove box. I'll show you. So right there is the VIN plate. So you can see that the seats are in pretty rough shape. It's just all in all a fairly rough vehicle, but a good start to an awesome restoration project. Here's the thing, I'm so busy on the farm, I've got so much going on that I don't have time to dedicate to this Bronco. I just don't have the time to dedicate to it and I don't want to let it sit and I don't want to let it rot. So what's the most logical thing to do? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to keep it, if we're going to sell it or what. I will keep you guys posted on the vlog. If I decide to sell it, I will let you know. These things are really getting, they're getting good money right now. I was watching a hot rod show today and they built a four door Bronco like this and they sold it for $250,000. Unbelievable. It's a good investment. If I do restore it myself, it'd be a great investment. And if I got tired of it, I could sell it or I could hold on to a piece of my dad 
and a piece of our farm history. I don't know, I'm on the fence about it. First thing, let's see if we can get this thing running. Let's crack the hood and I'll show you what's under the hood. All right, so under the hood, pull a little latch here and raise her up. So there's no prop rod. These old Broncos, we just flipped the hood up just like this. This is a beast of a vehicle. Let's look at the engine real quick. So underneath the hood here, we have a 289 V8 engine. It doesn't have any troubles with it other than it smokes like crazy when you first start it up. So we're gonna put the battery in over here. We're gonna put the battery in the battery tray. We're gonna hook the battery up and we're gonna pour a little bit of gas over in the carburetor just to see if we can get it turning. Now I've put an aftermarket electric fuel pump on here but for some reason it's not picking up fuel. So I brought a little gas can down here with me to set in the fender well to try and draw fuel into that fuel pump and get some fuel into that carburetor and get this thing running. So let's see how it works. We're gonna use our gator as a workbench here, okay? Lay this guy down. Basically I've got a battery. We'll set this over in the battery compartment. All right. We're just gonna slide on our negative and positive terminals. We'll do our positive first, then we'll slide on our negative. And we've made sure that the key is off. My dad did impeccable maintenance on this thing to lubricate it and keep it running decent. But the body, he didn't really care about too much. We're gonna take off the breather cover here, air filter cover. We're gonna pour a little bit of gas in here. All right, let's glug a little gas down in there. There we go. If you get a chance and you like this kind of stuff, click that thumbs up. If you like the Bronco, click that thumbs up. This is just good fun stuff right here. So the fuel comes from the fuel tank, goes through the fuel pump and into the carburetor here, okay? So we're gonna disconnect the fuel line from the gas tank, which we know the gas tank is rotted out, rusty, just gnarly rotted out. And we're gonna take this little gas can right here, this little guy that I had laying around, and we're gonna take the little gas can, put some gas in it, set it right up here and see if we can get this little pump to spin and pick up fuel and take it to the engine and we'll let the engine run. I hope it runs. This is a challenge. I don't know for sure whether we're gonna run or not. On. That's a great sign. It's getting spark. It's just not getting fuel. We gotta figure out the fuel issue. What we really need to do if we're going to use it if we're gonna get it in the garage, we need to drive it into the garage. And if we're gonna sell it, we need to be able to show somebody, hey, yeah, it runs. This is the point where I show you how to make a big mess. Maybe not. Okie dokie. Good deal. All right, we're about three quarters full. Folks, if you didn't catch the vlog where I showed you about these things, I'll post a link down in the video description. This replaces those government mandated fuel canister uh, lids, those ones, the little clicky thing that spill gas, those spill proof ones that are required from the government. I'll post a link down in the video description to those. You can replace your old ones. They're actually made for water and they work great for water. Down in here we go. We've got our 11 in one Klein screwdriver and we're going to take loose the fuel line here. Okay. Let's get this guy off. Man, I did a vlog about these 11 in one screwdrivers. If there were ever a screwdriver that I was going to marry, it would be this 11 in one screwdriver. They're just super duper duper handy. We even keep them in the wife's vehicle. If you need a screwdriver for any reason whatsoever, like when my wife hit a deer, we had to take half the front of the truck off in order to get it home. Man, this 11 in one, it did super great. Super, super great. Oh, come on off there, gas line. Good Lord. All right. so. That's what I was talking about. We're gonna break some gas line here. We got our fuel line loose, it's right here. We're gonna drop it over in the gas and see if it picks up fuel. So all I have to do is turn the ignition on inside here and this fuel pump will engage and hopefully pick up that fuel. And we'll know by the sound of it really quickly. Kids, don't try this at home. This is not very safe. All right, let's turn the ignition on. Get down here with the mic. You hear that? You hear it running? We'll drop it in the gas and see if she picks up. It should start making a different sound once it starts picking up fuel. This was the issue before. It would not pick up fuel. It's as if this thing is locked up inside. Give it the military fix here. If any of you guys were ever in the military, you know about that fix. Uh -huh. 
Mechanics, chime in now, okay? This is the time where you chime in. Maybe I need to prime this uh, pump. I, I don't know. Let's pour a little more in the carb. I'm gonna turn it on and off a few times and see if that helps it pick up fuel. All right, let's try her again. Oh yeah, daddy likey. Look right there, you see her? She's seen that thing start to go. She's like, oh, she just started cheesing because I spent a bunch of money on it and she didn't think it ran. <laughs> so she's over there smiling. Look at that smile. Now, I can't think of a reason in the world why this fuel pump wouldn't pick up fuel. We're gonna do something really stupid. It's as if the little motor in the pump is spinning, but nothing's happening. Whacking it seems to make a good noise. <sighs> Maybe if I tick it loose and try to siphon a little bit of fuel through here and got a good mouthful of gasoline. Oh, the bumper, oh, it's a solid bumper. Oh, piece of angle iron for bumper, it got me on the knee. I just, oh, that bumper got me again. <laughs> Okay, here comes gasoline in your mouth. Dude. I'm being laughed at by a lot of people that have a lot of mechanical knowledge right now, and I do realize that, but my troubleshooting methods are American, and that's all I can do is just be a good American and troubleshoot by drinking gasoline and being a ding-dong. You wouldn't think something brand new would be screwed up right out of the box. Maybe ruining the pump by letting it run dry. I'd, probably what one of you guys is thinking right now. Hey, you're just ruining the pump, dummy. Before we give up on the fuel pump, I went and got my little DeWalt pancake compressor and we'll try and just blow some air through this pump and see Oh, ho, 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 ho. as soon as I squeeze the trigger, it took it. It blew something out of it. Is it squirting out of the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> this thing right here, great. Now, we're gonna drive. We're gonna get this thing running now. It's gonna be cool. Aha. That right there is the sound of a 289 V8 from 1968 that hasn't been started in well over a year. I'm not having to hold the gas. Well, I might hold it right here. That's a beautiful sound right there, guys. I could drive it, but I don't have any brakes. Like I said, I have no way of stopping which makes things problematic. Listen to it run. Let's listen to it run for a bit. It's not really smoking as much as I remember. Let's look back here. So the Bronco, ever since we had it on the farm, always would blow like a blue smoke. Um, I don't know, guys, tell me what that's, a, what that's a sign of. I think it's rings. I think the engine's probably worn a little bit and we're getting a little bit of oil around the rings, but she'll sit here and chug a chug a chug. Awesome. Really cool. So the inspector for the state police said, does it run, does it drive? I have to see that it runs and drives and that all the lights light up. So in order for me to drive it on the road again, that's what I gotta do, which is the right thing. What do you think, Mrs. Stony Ridge? I think she sounds good. Should we keep the Bronco or should we sell the Bronco? It's tempting to keep. It's a cool rig, man. Be it's cool. It'd be pretty fun to spend about 250 hours and about $10,000 fixing it up. That's true but it'd be worth 40,000 when we got it done. So let's ram it up a little bit. Let you hear a little bit of America, baby. Woo! <laughs> Not very impressive. Guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for coming to see me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. We got the Bronco running. That is awesome. It only took, yeah, about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. Get the old Bronco running running strong pretty cool thanks a lot guys click that like button subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed if you want to get yourself a stony ridge farmer t-shirt 
There is the camera. That's the camera shadow. If you want to get yourself a Stony Ridge Farmer t-shirt, we've got two t-shirts available. I think they're only going to be available for about five more days, and that'll be it for this first round of t-shirts. So jump on it while you can. I appreciate you. We'll catch you next time here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Pretty excited. We got the Bronco running. All right? Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge. One final thing about the Bronco. A lot of folks have never driven or even heard of what's called the three on the tree. The three on the tree is a three speed transmission, but it's not on the floor shift, it's on the column shift. Let me show you. So the way the three on the tree works is you pull it towards you, the shifter towards you and down. That's first, then away from you and up. That's second, and then away from you and down, and that's third. Now, this is neutral where it floats, and then if you want to go reverse, you push towards you and up. So pull in towards you and up is reverse. Pretty cool. In case you guys have never heard of a three on the tree. So, horn doesn't work. But, just for fun, let's try to start it one more time. <laughs> Didn't even have to touch the gas. That's super duper awesome. Let's put it to a vote. Do we keep the Bronco? I know you want to see me restore this Bronco. Gosh, we got a lot of stuff going on on the farm. I want to do it so bad. I don't know. Thanks a lot, guys. Now you know what a three on the tree is. Boom. Three on the tree. One, two, three. Reverse. <laughs> see you next time.